Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to show you how to reload the Common Data Services data model using data flows. So stay tuned. The Common Data Services data model is used for creating a central repository of data for things like Flow and Power Apps, and also Power BI also. Now, this is the same kind of model that's used inside of Dynamics. And oftentimes, we want to extend that data model and put our own entities in there. Things like banks or state names or all sorts of goodness like that we may want to add inside this common data model, like customers. Well, one of the challenges customers have is how do I reload this data model after it's actually created and, and in process? For example, you may want to take data from SAP and populate the customer entity inside of Common Data Services. Well, in today's video, I wanted to create a different kind of video for you. It's going to be a hands-on video where you and I are going to create an entity that we can reload with, with data flows. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. First of all, we want to go ahead and open up make.powerapps.com. We also want to open up another browser and go to data.gov data.gov. Now, data.gov has a whole bunch of, of uh, great uh, data sets that we can consume. Today's data set we're going to consume is a list of banks that have failed over the last you know, few years, decades. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Well, data flows are loaded with things like Power Query. So data flow is using the power of Power Query to take data from a ton of our data sources and load it into our common data model, common data services. So let me go and get my, my mug out of there. And first of all, let's go to data.gov and let's do a search down here for failed banks. And you can actually do this example with me if you're really feeling of interest right now. Now you'll see the FDIC failed banks. I'm gonna right click on that and copy that link out so I can use it later. So that will be a URL that we can kind of, kind of see. And you can see the URL if I were to paste this right here. You'll see it's actually a CSV file. And I can hit enter and you'll see that it actually downloads a CSV file. Well, rather than go through and have to refresh this data file, download it, and then reload it every single time, we're going to go ahead and just tell it, let's go ahead and just pull it right off the website and then massage it. And then that becomes our data flow inside of Power Apps and inside of Flow. So let's get back into it here again. We have the URL. Now you want to go over to make.powerapps.com and we're going to create a new data flow. I'm going to go to my different environment here to make sure I'm actually in the correct environment and I'll get there under data and then data flows. Okay, next we'll go ahead and create a new data flow and then we'll call this data flow, I don't know, just webinar just for fun. Hit create. And next, it's going to ask us what type of data sources we want to pull from. But we know this is actually a CSV file, but look at all the other places we can pull data from, whether it be a PDF file, whether it be a SQL Server database or a MySQL database. All these systems can become tables inside that are accessible from Power Query and inside of Flow as well, for that matter. You also have things like uh, online services as well that are accessible here as well, like uh, salesforce.com and all those kind of systems as well. So in our case though, we want to go through, oh, let me get this mouse over here, here we go, and we'll pick a text and CSV file. We're not going to use a data gateway, so we'll make sure that's not selected right now. We'll go ahead and paste in the URL. We'll then go ahead and create a brand new connection. There we go, create a brand new connection. It's not going to use a gateway at this time. And uh, we'll have anonymous authentication allowed. Now notice in this case that we could use a gateway. So if we had data on-prem, like in our SAP database on-prem, and we wanted to get that into uh, the common data model, we could do that also. So whether it be on-prem or in the cloud, it will work beautifully. So going back over here again, we'll hit next. It's going to go up to that CSV file, capture that data, and then bring it in. Here we go. And it's going to give us a grid back, which is what, what is, but it looks identical to Power Query. Now, the, all the functionality from Power Query is not in here, but it gives us a good amount of functionality to do most of the transformations we want to do. But if you're used to Power BI, everything you have in Power BI 
will not be here 100% and 100% parity yet. However, they are making, making changes very, very quickly to this platform to make it where it's closer and closer parity. But most of what you're going to do, want to do is in here. So back over here again, we're going to want to make some, some small changes in here. Like for example, you'll notice, first of all, it went ahead and grabbed the source, it promoted the headers, and then it changed the column types. On top of that, we may want to do some additional things, like for example, get rid of this updated date. Let's, we, don't, we don't need that column. We also don't need this cert column, so we can go ahead and remove that one if you want to. You can just right click and remove column. We could go through and do some transformations to kind of cleanse this data up a little bit. Maybe, for example, I don't care about close date. I care about close year. So when I right click on it, you'll see a whole bunch of goodness that we can do. And traditionally inside of Power, Power BI, you'd see it right here, where you can go through and see a transform right here. In our case, though, we'll do transform column. And underneath here, you'll see date. And you can say, I just care about the year. So just give me the, the year column instead. So those are some simple kind of adjustments you can make. And we can, of course, transform this to get rid of the column, commas, and all that kind of stuff. But it's going to be an integer anyway, so it's going to work fine. You can also combine city and state and make a full address out of it. But this should be good enough to kind of demonstrate what it can do. And again, if you have Power Query experience, you're going to be really familiar with this already. We'll call this query field banks. Spaces are allowed. We'll then hit Next. All right, and again, so every step along the way, it's gone through and done the, and done the each, way, each way. So if I make a mistake, I can X out of that one step and kind of recover from where I left off at. After I do that, I hit next. It's gonna ask me a few more questions, like what do I wanna do with this data now? Do I wanna refresh an existing entity or do I want to create a brand new entity? And what are the rules around that refreshing also? Like, do I want to wipe and load each time? You probably don't want to wipe and load in most cases, but we'll see here in a moment. So with that now done, let me go ahead and, oh, okay, waiting for it a few seconds here. Now, this is, of course, because in my case, I'm doing streaming right now, so it creates a little bit more fun of experience because of that uh, from a performance perspective. In your case, though, you're probably likely already, already live. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to hop over while it's, while it's thinking right now, over to Power Apps 1 over here. And this is the entity we're going to create here. This is just a Power Query 2 right here. But this is the entity we're going to create. And you'll notice it has all the columns, acquiring institution, the bank names, the cities, and all those kind of things, including our year. And we're able to kind of go over to data here and, and actually see the data and go deeper into it right here. We can also uh, edit the data in Excel with an extra plugin that's a, a free plugin to do that as well. And for some reason, it's just not uh, performing real well right now. So we'll give it a few seconds more, longer to do that. There we go. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and not load an existing entity. We're going to pick a new entity here just so you guys can see that process. We're going to call this just failed banks. And what this can do is this can create a, a drop down box for all the banks that we want to go ahead and do some servicing on, perhaps. Uh, we'll go ahead and specify what our primary key is. In our case, our primary key, we don't have a good one in this case, but we'll just use bank name for the time being. And that'll be our key column also. Okay, again, it's not a great one, but you get the idea. Okay, and we also have it a multi-text. Let's actually make this a single line text. Uh, our, our bank names are not multi-line text. In our case, we're going to keep all these as a single line text. You'll notice that we can't have a primary key on a multi-line anyways. And then we're essentially done right now. So we're going to load a new entity. Uh, and down here, because I do you want to wipe and load each time? No, we'll keep it pretty simple. We'll hit next. The next step it's going to do is, well, do you want to refresh this manually or do you want to refresh this on an automatic schedule? So maybe every, every 30 days we're going to refresh this. I'm going to do it manually right now, but we could refresh this pretty, uh, pretty frequently, maybe once a month or once a day or multiple times a day perhaps. Now this time when I hit create, this is the part that takes a little, little bit of time to do. What it's going to do right now is going to go ahead and uh, create the entity called Failed Banks. It's then going to load that entity, and that could take anywhere. You'll see right now, I have to kind of go down here in the middle here. You'll see it's creating the entity, then it's going to load the entity. And the first time we do this, it could take a few minutes to do this. We're not actually going to watch me do this. 
But I just want to show you that once we're done here, this could be rescheduled to run on a periodic basis also. It basically does the, mat the matching on the primary keys and does all that work for you. But while we're waiting for that, see, it's doing, you can see the kind of the progress it's doing right now. Now it's going to load the data for us. And if I kind of just hop back over here, you can see the existing one here. We can go to data and do a quick um, uh, view of the data here. Actually pick a row here, for example. And if we pick this uh, get, uh, get data or edit record, for example, it's going to open the, what looks to be a dynamics environment to do, to do the edit in this case. Most customers prefer to edit this inside the Excel experience. I say most customers for doing the fast way. I'm going to approve this here. There we go. Approve the sign in. Uh, most customers prefer for bulk editing to do it inside the Excel experience. And what you do is you make all your changes and you hit publish and it pushes those changes up there. If you want to do like a onesie twosie, or you can use Power Apps if you feel unlike it. So Power Apps can connect the common data services also. So here we go, we're seeing our bank, we make our change, we hit save, and now that, that row has now been updated. Of course, this is just showing two columns. We have to edit our, our form to edit, uh, have more than that columns. So this was just a quick example on, on how we do this, and you'll see it's still, it's still loading, and it can take some time. Again, it takes a few minutes to do this, but we're not gonna you know, you know, assume it's going to work in our case. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick video on how do we uh, create our first data flow. Once it's created, you're able to edit it, schedule it, change the cha change the schedule on a periodic basis also if you want, or refresh it manually if you prefer also. Now this is part of our, our Power Apps class. We also love building apps for you as, a, as, a, as an, a company also. So if you'd like to do a hackathon with us together to build, to teach you and build an app, or just want us to build the app for you, Love to talk to you more. This is also part of our on-demand learning class from, from Pragmatic Works also. You'll find more about that in our link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to refresh data using Power Apps. Have a good day.